Hi, I'm James Eade of the Eade Foundation, and this is episode 33 of The Chess Files. The answers are out there. And um, who am I? Well, I'm a chess player. I used to be a competitive chess player, and I got pretty good when I was pretty young. I was, uh, you know, the highest rated high school player in New England. At one time, I would win adult tournaments and, and uh, as well as scholastic events. Uh, but then I, I became a FIDE master. What's a FIDE master? A FIDE master is a guy who's good enough to fight with grandmasters, but not good enough to become one. And so I, I did other things because I couldn't you know, get to be at the top in chess. So I did things like writing, chess for dummies. I did a lot of things like organizing. and. Um, <clears throat> organizing grandmaster events, for example, I am events. Um, and so I, I ended up winning the Outstanding Career Achievement Award by the United States Chess Federation in 2018. Okay, so that's me. What about the Eid Foundation? Well, the Eid Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And it doesn't matter what country you live in, doesn't matter what language you speak. If you play the game of chess, you can form a community. And if you form a community, you will never be alone. So we've started uh, helping out people from other countries, uh, Uganda, for example, Zambia. Uh, we've even started at senior centers. We supply sets and boards, and this is what we do. We believe in chess literacy and we believe in chess excellence. Now we can get you started playing chess, but we can't get you um, beyond a certain stage. If, you're, if you aspire to get beyond a certain stage, then you really need help getting into chess excellence. And so we have a, an award that we give each year for the best essay for how you can help the Eid Foundation make, advance its mission. And last year's winner was Alexi Rude from the University of Texas at Dallas. And Alexi's essay was designed to um, get funded to do research to support her book on the women's chess champions and the championships that were conducted in the United States. And this is a great expansion of our knowledge of the past. And so the Eid Foundation was totally behind it, but that's the kind of things that the Eid Foundation does. Now we want to build communities through chess. Now, what's the question of the day? Well, the question of the day is what was it like to work with Carol Jarecki? The chess world was devastated to learn that she passed away. She was born in 1935 and she um, passed away this year, 2021. And uh, I can't calculate uh, how much, how old she was, she, you know, 35 minus 20. Uh, anyways, uh, she lived to a good old age, but she was re robust right to the end, full of energy, more energy than I had ever. And, um, but I don't, you know, I only worked with her a couple of times, a few times, you know, we were at a lot of chess events together, but uh, I never really worked with her um, as much as uh, Polly Wright did. So Polly Wright, hello, Polly. Hi, James. Thank you for coming on to talk about Carol with me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm very grateful. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so um, I would, how many, well, I won't, I won't put you on the spot that way. Um, about asking how many times you worked with Carol. But before we talk about Carol, I want to know a little bit more about Polly. Like, where did you grow up and where do you live now? And how'd you get started in chess? Uh, so I grew up in Baltimore and uh, I um, currently live in East Chester, New York, which is in the suburbs of New York. Uh, city, and uh, was, I didn't learn how to play chess till I was 14, so I got mm -hmm. a late start in uh, chess life as 
we might say. And yeah. so um, friends of mine were playing on vacation. I said, teach me this game. And then by the time we did that same trip the following year, I was beating them and they didn't want to play with me anymore. <laughs> and then um, I went to a girl's uh, boarding school and I, uh, you know, found girls who played chess. And I thought I was really good because I could beat uh, everybody in the school. I could beat all the faculty. Uh, so I played in my first tournament in 1972 and it wasn't because of the fisher boom it was just oh. happened to have been uh there was a tournament down at uh, the university of massachusetts and i went to school up in greenfield so uh, no kidding i didn't know that um uh, yeah we I, probably ran across each other uh yeah. on the new england chess scene uh, i'm sure back yeah. in uh, 70s because uh, I also I went, went to UMass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also went to the University of Vermont for uh, college. So I would ah. come down to uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut. And, um, Did you ever play in the Vermont State Championship? Oh, yeah. The uh, matter of fact, I uh, directed it a uh, number of times with uh, Bill McGrath, uh, who was big on the Vermont uh chess scene yeah. um john curdo and i tied for first one year oh god you uh, john i know him very well he he came up to vermont a few uh times uscf had this visiting master um program art bizguire came up would do um a simul and then you could uh sign up to do a uh, lesson. And so John Curto did that. And the lessons were cheap. They were like $25 for an uh, hour. And um, so needless to say, John did beat me in the simul. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but well, John was, was my first big fish that I ever uh, won against. Oh, and uh, no, I, never, he, I never beat John. <laughs> he dropped out of a tournament after that. <laughs> but he was a much better player than I was. But uh, you know, every, anytime you sit down across the board, you might win. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, John also helped uh, Harold Dondas with his column in the Boston Globe, that which ran for years and years and decades. And, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Matter of fact, I think I might have even um, had a couple of games in that column. Right. Uh, I had won the New England Women's uh, Championship back in... 1978, uh, tied for first, but one on tie breaks. Uh, so, uh, so I think Harold had asked me f uh, for, a, you know, a game or two, um, and I think he said well, these aren't great games. <laughs> yeah, well, you yeah. know, it, it was the competition. I was a 1400 at the time, uh, uh -huh. so. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. We could talk endlessly about that subject, but um, uh, let, let's that's not get back. what we're here for. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me because I do get distracted easily. Um, but, uh, you know, Carol, um, it, what, let's ask you, when, when did you get into uh, tournament directing? And because and, is uh, that how you met Carol? Well, I or had... Uh, I started doing tournament directing in college. Um, we had a chess club at the university and I directed uh, some of those tournaments. And then, um, you know, I directed with Bill McGrath also uh, some of the tournaments that the Vermont uh, State Chess Association um, ran. And then, um, my first job at after college was uh, working for Bill Gorchberg. He mm -hmm. uh, needed somebody to kind of help him with the uh, office stuff because, of course, back then all the wall charts were on paper, and oh, yeah. right. he would get uh, you know he had events that were being run out in California. And, you know, the TD would 
you know, send him the wall chart. So I would prepare all the rating uh, reports, which was, you know, basically take the wall chart, staple a cover page on it, you know, fill in the details, uh, figure out the rating fee. <laughs> uh, right. So I, I did that for about a year. And of course, um, Bill, you know, I'd go to all the CCA tournaments and, you know, Continental Chess Association right. there. And that's how I met uh, Carol. Uh, ah. So, and that was, you know, Carol was still uh, being the chess mom, uh, the board chess right. mom. <laughs> right. Who, uh, you know, would fill out the uh, wall charts. And that filling out wall charts in between rounds is just like really tedious. It's yeah. it's like you're sitting there with the pairing sheet and you're going, okay, number 10 was white again, yeah. number 55. <laughs> so then you'd have to put the W in the one column and the 55 and the other and then yeah. go to number 55 and do, and do this black yeah. against 10 and then make sure you put the result in one or zero or half correctly yes. Uh, yes. and you know it became less crucial once we were doing pairings on um you know swiss sis but still bill pairings. always wanted the wall charts update but back in um yeah, the 70s, it was not only the wall charts, but it was those stack of pairing cards. <laughs> and oh, I yeah. remember directing um, the National High School Championship in Philadelphia and got this massive stack of cards. And again, you have to sit there and put white gets 55. <laughs> the result and then you had to also put the cumulative uh oh, right. oh, team competition and, and yeah. when you were pairing for uh you know for a scholastic event then you had to not only pay attention to what color they were due and their score but you had to make sure that you weren't pairing them against their teammate right <laughs> so so it was very nice having somebody like Carol to take care of the grunt work on the wall charts. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we could concentrate on filling out the pairing cards and um, doing the um, pairings. And I think, you know, she may even, as we would, you know, pair them and we'd make little piles of the, uh, uh, cards uh then i think you know sometimes she may have been the one writing the pairings on the pairing sheet uh, so she did a lot of that uh grunt work <laughs> well you know um, you know you, you see it. It. i'm sorry i'm echoing i don't know why that i'm starting to echo do you oh, hear that? Uh, I'm not noticing an echo. Okay, then I'll just continue as though I'm not hearing it. And uh, uh, so you said it was tedious work to do this, but you had to be concentrate while you were doing it because you couldn't afford to make a mistake. So you needed somebody dependable, reliable, and willing to, to do the tedious at work. <laughs> well, and especially because, as I said, those wall charts were what we uh, submitted to the USCF for the rating report. So, you know, if you messed up the wall chart and, you know, because you flip flop the score uh, and then it affects the it ratings, would, it would take forever. And, you know, because we didn't have, you know, the MSA, somebody couldn't go, oh, well, I won that round. Uh, you know, now as a TD, you know, I sometimes get these things, you know, because it got inputted wrong and I'll get an email. Uh, I won in round three, uh, you know, yep. so, uh, so that, uh, you know, 
secretarial work, if you want to call it that, was you know really crucial back uh, then before computers. Well, these days we say administrative work, but <laughs> just kidding you. Uh, the idea is on the other end, there's someone at the USCF that on the staff of the USCF having to do the same thing in reverse, right? They, right. they have to, <laughs> so there's a lot of paperwork involved in just getting the ratings accurately. And yeah. everyone, you know, we, li we live by extension through our ratings, <laughs> so you couldn't mess them up. <laughs> well, uh, you know, when I worked for Bill, sometimes we would, uh, you know, drive up to New Windsor and back then they had all your ratings on these little index cards. And I actually have a, a copy of the index cards and I was able to sort of piece together which rating went with which uh, tournament. But yeah, a lot of administrative uh, stuff to make the ratings go. And of course, you know, they only came out every two months and right. <laughs> Right. So um, that's that's how Carol got started. But she didn't end there. She didn't. No, that's for sure. That that's and she got started as a chess mom because her, I guess I gather I never met him, but it, her son was quite a good chess player. Is that right? Or? Quite quite a good chess player, and he used to love he used to love to tease me and needle me. And one time we had we played each other in the World Open, and he smashed me and I never let you forget it uh well not only that I was like when we went over the game afterwards he's like so why did you play that move yeah you know he, he was a smart aleck little kid so I I see I I remember saying to Carol I said John is just really obnoxious to me and she's like he likes you. D just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Easier uh, said than done. Show how they like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I like you, Polly, but I'll try not to be too obnoxious. But I can't promise. <laughs> but the the idea is then she went from chess mom to tournament director herself. So she was doing the kind of work you were doing. Uh, yes. Uh, At the beginning. Yeah. I think in the early um, days, um, I think she was doing more of the like, um, you know, being on the floor um, as a watching mode, the games, uh, yeah. doing gotcha, uh, yeah, pairings and stuff. But that right. all came um, along. I just don't uh, remember the progression of how you know she went from chess mom to you know an incredible td and uh right. you know i've had the experience of you know working under her and also um uh, playing in tournaments where she was the uh arbiter i you know i played in the bermuda open a few times yeah she loved that and, uh, and all the oh, players love that. that i missed that tournament and yeah. then they had a Hawaii chess festival one year, uh, and she was the uh, arbiter for um, that. So uh, that was merit based. You know, these weren't just these were choice tournament assignments, but that was based on her merit. Yeah. Um, that, let's show a picture of who we're talking about for the viewing audience. Hi, mom. And uh, this is uh, you're in the middle. Carol is to the, the left of you on our screen, you've got your right arm over her shoulder. And behind you is Dan Lucas, who I have a real grudge against because he's won so many Chess Journalist Awards. Um, <laughs> he's got him for being an editor, a writer, and even now he's getting him for being a blogger. Oh, I shouldn't, shouldn't go on to my resentments. <laughs> and um, you've got your left shoulder over Steve Doyle, who is the, who's been the, um, Organizer of the amateur, amateur Team East for years and years, and it's my, one of my favorite tournaments I've ever played in. And uh, this was at the Amateur Team East, wasn't it? Yes, this was the uh, 2020, the last uh, 
live tournament that I played in. <laughs> right. Yeah, that has been a, a problem for us. Uh, I also, you know, because of, we were sheltering in place, you know, and, but uh, that tournament is a fantastic tournament. And I think, I don't know how many times Carol was the uh, TD of that, but, uh, you know, uh, she was just, because everybody knew her, everybody trusted her. Yeah. Right. Well, and, you know, when Cricket was uh, alive, she'd be sitting there at the table and sometimes Cricket would be uh, up on the table next to her. And I remember um, Mike Summers, who would take a lot of uh, pictures, uh, you know, had, I, I think, a picture of Cricket with a uh, sign, so, something like, questions ask here <laughs> and there's <Yeah>. your cricket <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or complaints I, I can't remember what the sign was like but you know yeah. uh, cricket was in the picture uh, cricket the the game cricket because i would catch sunil wear a sometimes tracking cricket during a tournament <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know carol was into that too that's interesting well, I, I don't know if she named the dog cricket because oh i get it it was the dog's the game name. or whether the little chirpy thing <laughs> yeah, got it got it <laughs> so the other thing i want to call our viewers attention to um i wanted to uh say that if you want to know about all the things that carol did um it it you know, there's a Wikipedia entry for her, and I wanted to call it up on the screen. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's my producer. Stop messing around. That's my Wikipedia. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh, he's yelling at me now. He thinks he's funny. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I uh, Now he's going to make me do it. All right. So I'm going to share the Wikipedia screen for Carol. Because now I'm manually involved, so I might make a mistake here. But let's see. Okay, that looks good, right? That's yep. Carol Jarecki's Wikipedia page. And it has her chess career, the highlights of her chess career. Of course, it's not detailed. Um, her personal life. And and one of the things that she was known for was, um, didn't she kind of like break the bank in Monte Carlo or something like that? What, what do you know the story? I I've heard it, but I don't know it very well. But it was like roulette was involved, or um, yeah. So they they actually uh, there was a very nice obituary in the New York Times. Uh, mm -hmm. Still in McLean Road, and he did go uh, into that in a little more detail. That uh, she and her husband started like. Uh, you know, watching the roulette wheels and noticing that certain wheels, uh, some numbers tended to come up um, more than others. And they, you know, were tracking this and uh, beat the house in a number of uh, casinos and eventually got banned. <laughs> um, I don't play roulette, so I don't really... Uh, understand it except for I guess you uh, bet on a number if the ball lands there uh, you win yeah. so yeah and you can bet on color number or whatever in, since they figured out the kind of the odds uh, yeah well, they, there was a mechanical flaw from what I understand yeah so that something would come up in a, a, more often than it normally did and so they figured it out and then they just started making money. So yeah. it's just one of those things that were, you know, uh, being, being, it was pattern recognition. If you can recognize a pattern, then you can take advantage of it. And this is yeah. a life lesson kids out there. Um, you know, pattern recognition is a fundamental to chess. If you play chess, you'll learn to value pattern recognition and that will help you in any aspect of your life. So yeah. what do I have on my, what do I have? Oh my goodness. Oh, yuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Carol. Um, no, did I'm you Polly. Ever... <laughs> Pardon? You, Polly. You Polly. Polly. You're Polly. But, but you know, the, when... it, it's funny you should say that because I would have people come up to me and call me Carol because uh, you can't, can't really tell in that 
picture, but we had very similar short hair uh, yeah. style. So sometimes people would call me uh, Carol, which I took as a compliment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. I, I'm sorry. I just got a little distracted by that thing that was. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> um, so w when did you start? Did Did you ever like um, work with her like side by side in a tournament? Like you were not. She's on the floor and your back's in the three D room, but as as like co tournament directors and then. Um, well, or did she just skyrocket through? To well, the she top? yeah she. Um, you know, really kind of skyrocketed through the uh, ranks. But, you know, I worked with her at uh, a number of scholastics, but uh, generally I was, you know, doing backroom, you know, computer uh, stuff while she was uh, out on the floor. Um, of course, uh, you know, one of the things about the, um, winnings from roulette is it allowed her to buy her plane? Um, a plane. So she yeah. she had a plane. Yes. So she had a uh, Cessna. It was a uh, six passenger Cessna. Though I I think oh. rarely she had more than um, you know maybe one or uh, two people in in there uh, because usually the back of the plane you know had her bicycle and you know <laughs> other stuff that she was taking uh, with her just you know on a leisure uh, trip so the two times that i flew with her it was just the two of us uh, so uh, what was that like well uh the first trip I thought I was never going to want to get on an airplane again. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were going to Little Rock, Arkansas for the uh, National Elementary. And Carol told the organizer, uh, I want Polly Wright as one of the uh, computer directors. She's really good. And I want her on staff. And of course, yeah, there's always the expense issue. Well, we're going to have to pay for airfare. And Carol's like, I will fly her down with me. So um, she, uh, I met her at Westchester County Airport. And back then, uh, the airport was basically nothing more than a, a couple of trailers. Uh, now it's... Uh, it's a small airport, but it's much nicer than it was back then. So uh -huh. it was a really gray day. It had been raining all day. It stopped when we um, left, but went up through the clouds, and I'm like, could you, couldn't see anything. Right. Massive clouds. There's a now, lot of trust involved here. <laughs> we, we got up above the uh, clouds, and it was kind of neat seeing all these places uh, that, you know, I ride my bike around to, you know, see them yeah, from the sure. uh, air. But uh, it's an unpressurized plane. Uh, so the only way you can, uh, it, and it's really noisy. So the only way you can communicate is using a headset. Uh, so she has a headset so she can, uh, talk to air traffic control sure, and then I had the headset so I was also you know hearing all the uh, you know communications with air traffic control which was really interesting because actually I do love to uh, fly but uh, but it was interesting uh, you know hearing all the things you know as they're telling you know a uh, uh, Delta flight that's flying up at, you know, 30,000 feet and we're way, way down. And so she had it on autopilot and then suddenly we hit this air pocket 
and yeah. literally my head hit the fuse lodge. Now the headset had this lambskin in between the two pieces. So that kind of cushioned the blow. And she's yeah. like, <laughs> I think I'm going to take it off autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, um, yeah. so we were flying to like somewhere in Kentucky to refuel. And I never knew how wide a range the Blue Mountains were until we bounced across them. And... <laughs> And then you would hear, you know, she'd be talking to the air traffic controlling, uh, you know, it's really turbulent down here at, you know, 3,000 feet. And the air traffic controller would be, it's turbulent everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, the controller would say, well, you know, try this altitude. And, but it was, Yes. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe when we get to the airport in Kentucky, I can get on a bus and take that the rest of the way. Right. Not realizing that when you're flying in a small plane, that you're not always landing at a big airport. You know, it's a, a tiny little airfield in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky where, you know, no she yeah. refuel. So, um, yeah. you know, there was no bus to Little Rock. Yeah. <laughs> but, the you, know, my rest only of the, you know, the rest of the flight was beautiful. Um, yeah. And, you know, you're low enough down that you can really uh, see a lot. And, you know, sitting right next to the pilot, you know, you just get a whole different perspective than you do when you're sitting in a 737, you know, looking out the um, window. So yeah, uh, the, the only th experience I could relate to that I did a little what we called puddle jumpers. It was right. like from either from Albany or Hartford to New York. I can't remember which airport there, but, you know, it was just a small plane and a small trip. But then we got caught in that turbulence and we we're all bouncing around and, uh, you know, and I, I, you know, the person behind me needed a vomit bag and it was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I, you know, I can really relate to that. I'm never flying again to healing <laughs> with those small planes. It's, you know, I related the story on Facebook and my husband's prone to motion sickness. So even, you know, when we fly, he, um, you know, wears a uh, scalopamine patch to help with. Uh, right. So his comment was, there's not enough Dramamine in the world for me to fly <laughs> directly airlines. <laughs> <laughs> so it, he wouldn't be caught dead on that uh, plane with me. Um, right. But um, it, it was funny because somebody did an interview with Carol for Empire chess and uh they asked her about you know flying to tournaments so she talked about that flight and she's like i don't i don't know if she was ever going to want to fly with me again um but of course i had to get back from little rock <laughs> right right <laughs> um that flight was fine and then that same year uh she flew me to syracuse um and that flight was fine it was winter it was cold uh, but you know, we weren't flying through any snowstorms or anything, uh, really adventuresome. It did snow when we were up there, but, uh, right. so. Yeah, Polly, I, I, you said when you were flying over, you looked at the terrain that you used to bicycle around it. So you, you're a bicyclist. Uh, yeah, I do, uh, triathlons, uh, swim, bike, run. <laughs> oh my goodness. My knees hurt just hearing about. <laughs> well, sometimes my knees uh, hurt. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. So uh, I, I do these rides, and there are all these beautiful reservoirs, uh, you know, that supply water for New York City. And you know, one of the routes I do, uh, we ride along the um, reservoir, and there's one route where we actually cross over the um, dam that 
uh, holds all the water. Uh, and so it was really cool, you know, being able to see the roads and the bodies of water that, you know, I cycle um, around from the air. Needless to say, I didn't see much of that on the flight out to Little Rock. I saw more of it when we came back and the weather was nicer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. So being a triathlete, uh, you had enough energy to keep up with Carol. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> she, she has a lot of um, energy. I mean, at the amateur team, uh, you know, she's like all over the uh, floor. And if you remember that main ballroom is yeah huge and yep. uh, you know she'd spent a lot of the time over by the uh, top boards um, you know that were behind the uh, ropes, the ropes. Um, but um, you know she'd be up at the uh, front and you know she was she was no nonsense uh, oh my goodness yes especially when it came to cell phones uh, <laughs> you know uh, you, you did not want your cell phone to go uh, off during that tournament yeah. because you know one of the one of the obituaries I or the obituaries that I read about her used the word frail and if you knew her there is nothing frail about Carol Jarecki you know she was she was maybe petite in, in terms of size but um, man if your cell phone went off the look she would give you you would lucky to survive it. You, you know, you knew you did wrong and you weren't going to do it again. <laughs> well, uh, I had a few arguments with her uh, about pairings uh, in uh, the Bermuda Open. I got paired against one of the kids that uh, was in the group of us that had traveled down. I'm like, I came all the way to Bermuda to play one of those students from my chess team? Really? Right. She's right. like, got to do what the pairings are. And then I had yeah. a, another discussion with her in Hawaii mm -hmm. about the same thing. I'm like, yeah. I flew all the way to Hawaii to play some guy that I've played at the Marshall a bunch of times, and I always lose to him. And I <laughs> And I did that. Like, the same thing happened to me at the at, at one of the Massachusetts Open Championships, and the guy, you know, I lived on the northwest corner of the state, and it was held in, closer to Boston. And so the guy that gave me a ride because I was too young to have a driver's license, um, it he and I were paired the first round. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness! I got, I finally got out of my backyard, and I played a guy in my backyard. <laughs> I used to, when I was in college, I used to drive these uh, kids down to uh, like Massachusetts or Connecticut. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they were good about trying to avoid pairing us. But then, uh, you know, sometimes by like the fifth round, it was like. Oh, yeah. You have sorry. to. It's fourth pairing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. So, Polly, thank you so much for coming on to talk about Carol Jarecki. She was a a force of nature in the chess world, in and out of it, so being a pilot and all of that, um, and and making a uh, killing in Monte Carlo. And so there's a lot of characteristics to Carol. And thank you for helping us understand. Go to her Wikipedia page to learn more details if you're interested. There's a lot of references to her, and you can track down as much you, as you want to know. She's worth remembering. And thank you again, Polly. Um, is there anything that I've left out, didn't ask you, or anything else you want to mention before we say goodbye? Because my no, producer's I, in my ear. Um, you know, particularly with all, you know the number of um, scholastic tournaments that she did where she was the uh, Chief TD, um, just her, her ability to handle um, not only the kids, but the parents, because a, a lot of times, you know, you make a ruling, the kid's happy with it, and then they go, uh, and the parent says, well, how did your game go? And they're like, well, so-and-so happened, and then the parents all, <gasps> and, <coughs> and then, you know, screaming to the, uh, you know, director and, you know, of course there's a, appeals and stuff. So 
uh, like I said before we came on line, you know, she was uh, the head TD for, uh, you know, the elementary when we had it in New York. And yeah, these two parents, you know, one, and they're screaming back and forth. And one's like, well, I'm going to call my lawyer. And the other parent is, I'm a lawyer and my wife is a criminal lawyer. Well, <laughs> she to get that settled. And then the next year when we were in Little Rock, same sort of thing with two parents like screaming at each other and uh you know her and, and she's like oh more lawyers <laughs> <laughs> but um you know that's why she got paid the big bucks to yeah yeah you know sort that sort of to stuff to deal with those out. people and i could just sit there at my computer yeah and- yeah <laughs> A <laughs> smart woman, yeah. Polly. Dalton. But no, but, she was but, just very good at uh, untangling messes like that. Yeah. There's a scene that I can't forget in Searching for Bobby Fisher where the guy is, the camera's on the guy and he's, you know, very strict telling him how to behave, what not to do, and uh, no nonsense. And then they pan and he's talking to the parents. Not the kids. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about that, um, that was based on the New York State Championship that um, Sunil was at. Um, yeah. Running. And, yeah. um, and even though he did not <laughs> lock the parents up in a cage uh, like they did in the movie. Uh, <laughs> You know, that was the sort of stuff that, you know, it's like, no, you can't go into the playing room. And yeah, yeah so that uh, so that whole scene was based on things that actually happened at our yeah. championship. And I was, yeah. you know, one of the uh, TDs. I think I was doing uh, pairings at that. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Sunil, I can picture Sunil uh, reading them the riot act. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he does not take uh, much uh, nonsense from anybody. I would uh, use uh, different yeah. words, yes, but yes. Uh, I, I want to keep live this broadcast. Yes, at least uh, PG, if not G. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and Carol was the same way. She didn't take a lot of nonsense. So thanks again, Carol. i uh, Carol Polly for um, coming on the show and uh, telling us more about Carol Jarecki, who's a person who we all want to remember. And as long as we remember her, she's not really gone. So yeah. I'm gonna take you backstage now and do my outro. And um, all I say is uh, tip of the cap to you for coming on and talking about it. Oh, you're welcome. I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you for asking. Okay. All right. So that was Polly Wright talking about Carol Jarecki. Uh, and uh, the chess world has, had a loss and we will muddle through somehow. But um, this has been The Chess Files, episode 33 of The Chess Files. The answers are out there. And it's brought to you by the Eid Foundation and the Eid Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And if you're part of a community, you'll never be alone. So thank you for watching. And it's Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And um, you will see me then.